Hey everyone, Thywarm here. A few days ago, Superfuse released into Early Access. It is 25 euros over here. It is a cell shaded cyberpunk ARPG hack and slash game. It's got at the moment of writing a 56% Steam mixed rating and in my opinion, it's pretty decent. It's okay, but it also has issues. When trying to review a product that just launched in Early Access, I'm typically thinking about a few things. First, the foundation of the game. Second, how much content does it have? And third, is the asking price reasonable? I'll also dive into the roadmap at the end of the video. Timestamps are available. Let's talk about the foundation of the game. In terms of options, there are quite a few. It's decent for an EA title. You have your graphics, settings, some audio sliders, all keys are rebindable, I'm not missing much. Diving straight into performance then, it is so-so. Sometimes a solid 60 plus FPS at highest settings on a 2080 i7 CPU and 4040p. Quite often however, levels seem not optimized and my frame rate dips into the 30s. What I did appreciate were the fast loading times, that's good. Talking narrative, Superfuse definitely scores bonus points here. The art direction is quite unique, the cell shaded graphics work well, the plot is easy but serviceable with a corruption taking over the land and you as part of the enforcers fighting it. Everything is voice acted including NPCs and quests, the music is beautiful and fitting, it reminded me of Cyberpunk 2077 from time to time, plus there is a cute robot telling you about the different zones when you enter. I like that, it adds some emotion immersion to the game. On top of all of this, you will find the occasional audio tape of NPCs gone missing mostly, like in Bioshock, and I'd say overall it's good. Then some gameplay elements I want to highlight. At first glance, this is just another ARPG and in many ways it is. Superviews has at least two game systems I do want to highlight, one positive and one negative. Starting with the negative, the potion or flask system. Flasks are called boosters and you have to pick up individual charges per booster, which are then stored in your inventory. It's pretty dumb, like walking around in PoE and instead of flasks regenerating by killing monsters, it drops flask charges, which you then manually pick up and they take up inventory space. If you use a booster or a flask, the charges in your inventory are used to refill the booster. But without going into your inventory, there is no way of telling how many charges you still have lying around and if you should pick up more from the ground. This is a very convoluted system and it's another attempt I see at ARPG devs trying to revolutionize the potion system but can we please just copy paste this from any other working ARPG like I don't know Last Epoch, Path of Exile. I don't mind but please get rid of this weird booster mechanic and its charges. It's not fun to use, it doesn't add anything to the game and it clutters the inventory for no apparent reason. Then the positive gameplay mechanic, the fusing. Superfuse derives its name from the skill mechanic in the game, which allows you to fuse all sorts of fuses together and in that way augment your skills. While there are a few limitations, for example that certain fuses only work on projectiles, there really aren't that many limits. And tinkering around with your skills and your fusings to see which wacky skills you can create is really enjoyable. This is already a very fleshed out and mature system. There are plenty of fuses and those interested in creating broken builds can go ham here. Which leads me to another negative, the pacing. Pacing is problematic for some classes because skills are not balanced at all. I started with the ice skill tree of the elementalist and that skill just does no damage. As there's no guarantee you're getting fuses, you are reliant on RNG to improve your build. That is fine in theory maybe, but in practice it falls apart. It can easily take you until level 10 to find a few fuses which you can use. Even then, your build is very likely only one skill because you need a lot of levels to unlock the entire skill tree which is where new skills can be found. However, increased spell damage is like another branch of the passive skill tree and investing in spell damage means you're postponing unlocking additional skills as the points are now spent elsewhere. As a result, you're stuck with either an okay or strong character with only one skill or a weak character with many skills but no extra damage, meaning you'll have a hard time killing monsters. Even when creating a successful character because I rerolled to fire damage, even in that scenario at level 20 you're likely only making use of your starting skill. Because of what I described above, you are simply better off specializing in one skill and increasing its damage. There isn't much more incentive to move down the tree and get to other skills to play around with, 
in the early game because you're just lacking damage. I only did that much later at level 20 or so. By that time you have reached endgame and you're only playing endgame to get more levels and finally unlock those other skills to play with. While you can respec, which does cost credits, it doesn't take away the fact pacing can be horrible. I would argue some classes, in particular the Technomancer, the summoner of superfuse, is borderline unplayable until you collect some fuses and are like level 10. Minions are incredibly bad at the start and only start ramping up a bit around level 15. You're almost done with the campaign at that point and it takes you at least 3 hours to get there. Let's talk some quality of life. There is no auto looting or auto pickup. There is no loot filter which isn't great. A basic loot filter would solve a lot of clutter on screen. There's no health regen on your character or your minions by default. And I didn't find anything on gear either in that regard. A few random points then that I still want to put in the video. There are some bugs of course, most notably invisible enemies which can be problematic. The overlay map adding fog of war for some reason. Don't think that's supposed to happen, it makes it difficult to see where you've been. And then I found visibility to be problematic. You literally can't see shit sometimes and while that could be intentional with a sight stat on gear, it's not fun and it really doesn't add much to the game. And then finally level design, I wasn't too impressed and during the campaign had to do a lot of backtracking due to the absence of quest markers. I think quest markers should be at least an option we can toggle on because no one is playing an ARPG because they like wandering around in the campaign so much. Still, while I'm not necessarily painting a pretty picture here when looking at the foundation, most of the issues described here can be easily fixed. Balancing is just numbers. Fuses could be handed out deterministically as quest rewards. That happens in one case now, but it could be much more common, so at least you have a few fuses available. Just removing that dumb booster system or reworking it, that's definitely possible. As a matter of fact, the core of the game, the skill system, the progression after some balancing changes, it is all there. Barring performance, which for me wasn't good, I think Superfuse actually has a solid foundation to build on. All the elements of a fun ARPG are there. I didn't talk much yet about the combat, but it feels really good. You can also see that hopefully in the footage. And once you do get over that initial hurdle of your low level character with no skill points and no fuses and no power, the game does ramp up and it does get rewarding in the end when you transform your single fireball elementalist into a true monster of flames covering the screen with fireballs. Time to move on to point number 2, content. Superfuse has a campaign and endgame. The campaign is about as linear as a Path of Exile campaign or a Last Epoch campaign and it takes about 6 hours or so to complete, running it for the first time and exploring a bit. After you've completed the campaign you unlock endgame, the solar map. The solar map is a representation of our solar system, they even put the alleged planet 9 in there I think, which I can appreciate. And in the solar system there are 4 random missions generated each time. Each mission has a few modifiers such as luck, which is loot rarity I think, increased credits drop, more experience, that sort of thing. And of course also monster modifiers, like increased accuracy, health regen, damage or crit chance. It's fairly straightforward, it's not super interesting, there's not a whole lot of variety either with in-map events or anything of that nature, but because you're not max level when you enter endgame you may still be incentivized to keep playing, unlock more fuses, power and go more crazy with your build. Because that right now is the main selling point, creating wacky builds with fuses and keep experimenting. Apart from that there's maybe, you know, 8 to 10 hours of content available for you unless you want to rerun the whole thing with a different class. Being generous here, assuming you play and try all classes, you're looking at maybe 25 hours of gameplay. But you're likely done with Superfuse way before that. I know I am at around 12 hours. Which brings us to point 3, the price point. 25 euros. For me, I just buy these games. I like following early access titles, playing them, cover the updates, do videos like this. I don't mind spending 25 bucks on a game like this. I can afford it too, I'm really not on a budget. But it is quite a hefty price point and I don't think Superfuse in its current state warrants the 25 euro asking price. You pay 10 more euros and you're playing last epoch. You can buy the entire Grim Dawn collection for this money. 
Games like The Slormancer or Chronicon are much cheaper and have more to do and more polish. Pay 5 euros more and you play The Ascent, an amazing ARPG. So compared to its contemporaries, it doesn't really hold up all that well. I think a fair price here is 15 euros, maybe 20, but 25 is too much. There's not enough content, there's not enough polish, there's very little replayability and while the game is promising enough and has most of its foundation ready, I feel they should drop the price. With 25 euros people have expectations and those are not met at the moment. I think they might in the future, but not now. Also from a review perspective this is potentially hurting them. People may be much more forgiving of your title if you price it at 15 bucks. And now the reviews are mixed at 56% Steam reviews. To conclude, I think Superviews is okay, it's definitely not bad, it has potential, the core systems are mostly solid and fun, but it is too expensive. That's my verdict. Then the final piece, the roadmap ahead. Superfuse is expected to be in early access for one year. Some of the additions the dev are hoping to implement include new campaign expansions, an additional hero, new loot, controller support and more. Once the devs go into full release you can expect a more robust version of the game, including features and added content that has been identified and requested by the community. The release cadence will likely move towards a more standard live service offering, meaning fewer but more concentrated content updates. Live service games have a bit of a bitter taste these days, but with ARPGs it makes a lot of sense and my favorite ARPGs are actually live service games. And that's it for the video, thanks for watching and making it to the end. See you soon, love you all, bye bye.